something on your mind anytime. I'm here to listen, sister talk. When you need someone who understands, I know what you're missing, sister talk. No matter what you're going through, don't worry, I ain't going nowhere. Sister talk. If you ever feel alone, say the word, I'll be right there. Sister talk, sister, 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 sister talk, sister, sister, sister. Okay, we're going to start off with the resurrection of Christ. And I want to, I want to ask you all this. What is the res resurrection of Christ? What, what does that mean? Is it just a story? Is it just a myth? I mean, how does that reflect in today's society, the res resurrection of Christ? Well, I mean, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the foundation of Christianity. Yes. You know, um, people, they can read through the biblical narratives of the life of Jesus Christ and the healings and the, the many miracles that he has done. However, when he got to the cross mm -hmm. and he gave his life for us, to give our, his life for us is one thing, but the reality is that he got up you know, from the grave. Right. And had he not get gotten up, it just would have been perhaps someone standing, you know, in, in, in your stead to keep you alive. But he is our hope. He is what we look to. It, his, his resurrection lets us know that regardless as to how down our lives might take us, mm -hmm. there's still an expectation of hope that we oh. can rise again. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I just want to add to that also, uh, <coughs> in addition to what uh, Reverend uh, Steele has already said, is that there is, there is the, the advent and the ascension of Christ, but there's also the aspect of that Christ in our own consciousness. Right, and that's okay. one of the things that, that I really focus on in, in my ministry. Uh, Jesus actually foretold it when he said, I am the resurrection and the life. And that is reborn in us mm -hmm. as part of Christ consciousness. And that is one of the things that really helps us begin to evolve in this existence as better beings. Hey, just to add on, I agree with both um, Reverend Celia and uh, Reverend Gay, but just to add on to that, for me, I'd like to go I won't say a step further, but in addition, for me, the resurrection signifies hope. Mm -hmm. But in addition to hope, before we can have hope, we, we must die. There must be death. Mm -hmm. So we must die daily in Christ that we can, uh, you know, and when I say die, die to self, die to selfish uh, ambitions, die to arrogance, die to all those things negative. And then there's a birth, the, uh, the resurrection uh, of those things that's needed in the community that we may help uplift those that are marginalized. I want to ask you all this. If there was not the resurrection of Christ, if Christ did not rise on uh, the Sunday, he died, he was crucified Friday, and he rose on Sunday, would he, will, will we know of Christ, of who he is today? Will we have known Christ? Will he be another person that was out there healing the poor, the sick, Go ahead. We, we would still know Christ. I mean, because um, um, I mean, Jesus raised somebody from the dead, um, Lazarus. Right. So, so it's, it's not mm. the, the, the fact that it was uh, that it was the resurrection is that who was resurrected. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not so much that he was resurrected, but who it was that was resurrected is the emphasis. So yes, we would know him. Right. But, but this this is the emphasis is on who was resurrected. Okay. And, and your question also points to the universality of, of spirituality mm -hmm. in that uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, a famous Buddhist monk, said that there are some Christians who are more Buddhist than Buddhists and some Buddhists who are more Christian than Christians, mm -hmm. meaning that Christ consciousness or enlightenment, as Buddhists would call it, or heightened or fourth dimensional consciousness is larger, much larger <coughs> than who we are in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And so I think that regardless that the, the spirit of Christ would mm -hmm. be among us, a heightened spirit. Okay, we're going to continue this. I want to hear a song from Sonia, Sonia D. Johnson. Sonia, how are you? I'm great. So what song are you going to sing? 
we, I am going to say, we yearn for your presence. Because of Jesus and his resurrection, we can experience the presence of God. So that's what I will be singing about. We yearn for the presence of the Lord. Okay. Satisfy our thirst and down us from on high. We earn for your presence, oh God. We earn for your presence. Oh. We need a revival and we need your presence and we long for your presence. We need you to dwell. We need you, Jesus. We earnestly seek your presence. We need your presence. We need your presence to live right. We need your presence, oh God, to love everybody. to renew us. We need you to replenish us, oh God. Please revive us. We Without you, oh God, we long for more of you. Only you can satisfy. Only you, oh God, we need you to revive us, renew us, replenish us. We are. 
you, Jesus. Oh God. Oh God. We yearn for your presence. Hallelujah. Oh God. We yearn for your presence. Hallelujah. We learn. We yearn for your presence. Hallelujah. Come on over here. <laughs> Very good. So what, what made you pick that song to um, sing? Well, we yearn for a presence. Your presence, oh God, was a song that the Lord placed on my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, so that song was birthed out of one of a, a prayer and worship session at my church. Did you write this song? I did. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. And so uh, we were seeking the Lord. Actually, it was an all-night prayer vigil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I practiced law as well. Mm -hmm. It was a Friday night. Mm -hmm. And just coming in and just dealing with all that I had to deal with that week and just feeling everyone else's problems as, as, you, as a lawyer, that's what we do. We solve other people's problems. <laughs> but, <laughs> but coming to church, I was like, oh God, we just need your presence. Okay. We need you to renew us, uh -huh. to revive us. So often, many of us go around looking for things to satisfy us uh -huh. when only God can satisfy. What do you think about the resurrection of Christ? What does that mean to you? It means that we can go before the throne of God boldly. Priorly, pri prior to Christ, we had to go through a, a formal priest. We mm -hmm. couldn't just come. You had to come and bring a sacrifice, right. whether it be you know, an animal of some form. Mm -hmm. But because of Christ, mm -hmm. we can go boldly. We, we can come without sacrifice of praise. Okay. We can boldly say, God, we need your presence, okay. as opposed to formally going through. Again, call in the show, 212-757-1393, if you have any questions or comments about the resurrection <coughs> of Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. I want to continue our conversation before uh, the lovely, we heard the lovely voice of Sonia D. Johnson. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, when you said something that really sort of like um, piqued my interest before, you, the only way you can get through Christ is with a priest, at, you know, or a minister or somebody else. You just couldn't go up to him and pray and give yourself all. Is that, is, well, is that... I what the resurrection to, to, about? Prior, prior to, in, in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. when people uh, wanted to repent for their sins, they mm -hmm. would go and they would have to uh, confess to a priest, and, mm -hmm. and the priest, they would have to bring a sacrificial lamb or cow or whatever, and, mm -hmm. and that would be the blood mm -hmm. that, was, that was slain for the remission of their sin. Mm -hmm. but, the, the, but the sacrifices were not sufficient. Okay. You know, and so Jesus represents the only sufficient sacrifice that would bring us, bring humanity back into right relationship with God. And so we can go to him boldly, as she shared, because we don't need anyone to stand in the gap oh, okay. for us right. to go to, um, to God, because now we have Christ. Okay. Yeah, see that? Okay. That, Jesus is our high priest. See, mm -hmm. prior to that, as, as, as uh, Reverend Steele was saying, uh, prior to that, he had to go to the high priest, and the high priest would sit in what they called the inner court. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus died, it, it signifies the, the, the splitting of that veil, the breaking of that inner court, that only the high priest, and once per year, the high priest would go in the inner court and atone for one's sins. So mm -hmm. when Jesus, Jesus is our high priest. Right. So when Jesus died, we no longer have to go to a high priest because Jesus is our high priest. Okay. And, and just to paint the picture further, in the book of Leviticus, mm -hmm. it, it talks about how you, you structure the tabernacle or mm -hmm. the tent of meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. And you had in the center of that the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. And the Levites, who were the priests of all of the tribes, they would surround that tent of meeting. And the only one who could go in and officiate and burn those sacrifices in the tent of Holy of Holies was, as Sonia pointed out, it had to be a priest. And later on in the New Testament, the question is raised, was that sufficient? And the response is no. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, they wouldn't have had to keep burning more Every and year. more animals <laughs> and goats and, and even uh, doves and uh -huh. pigeons. Mm -hmm. You know, I find it so, so interesting. And so but when you say that there was, you had to, in the Old Testament, go through the sacrifices. But aren't you all the vehicles 
to Christ and God? Don't people come to you all to talk to God also? Wouldn't you say that's sort of like the same thing? I'm being kind of no. The I, bad I, guy. I, I, would say, <laughs> I would say no. I, I, I am not uh, the go-to person to stand in the gap. I, my my job is to direct you to Christ. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I can lead you and guide you, inform you with what I what has with what has been revealed to me. Mm -hmm. But you know, Jesus is the way and the only way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we don't receive him mm -hmm. unto ourselves, mm -hmm. like your mother's salvation and relationship with, with God and with Christ cannot save you or mm -hmm. build your relationship, but it can be an example, okay. you know, a sign, a, a, a path for you to follow to get to that road. Okay. Yeah, for, for me, um, we, 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 we nearly, we, we merely, uh, direct, we, we, we serve as shepherds. We serve as, as serving the people, but only God saves. Mm -hmm. We don't save. Mm -hmm. uh, human can't save. Mm -hmm. um, the best we can do is, is try to be the best example we can be. Right. And even in that, we're inadequate and we're flawed. Right. So. Remember, please call in 212-757-1393. 212-757-1393. I, I just want to point out one of my, my favorite scriptures is in the book of Luke mm -hmm. 1721 when asked where the kingdom of God is. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, it is neither here nor there. The kingdom of God is within you. Right. And so at, in the ministry, that's one of the things that, that I know I try to teach mm -hmm. my congregation, that, that consciousness, that kingdom, that infinite supply is within you. Uh, there are people who don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Can you say why they should believe or there is proof <coughs> that he did rose from the dead? Because he, do you, I'll let you all tell. So the, the reality is that oftentimes people can't believe what they can't see. People can't believe what they can't feel. Say that again. Say that again, please. Oftentimes people can't <laughs> believe what they can't see and they okay. can't believe what they can't feel. Exactly. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And so, but the reality is that it's a faith walk a faith. and not just a faith talk. Mm -hmm. I have not seen Christ myself. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. However, I've heard and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. So I heard that Jesus was real. I heard as a child that Jesus was the way. I heard that Jesus loved me. Mm -hmm. I went to church because if I didn't go to church, I'd be punished by my parents. Mm -hmm. But in hearing that, as I grew older, I had to investigate the reality of Jesus for myself. And so I can only invite people to try him for yourself. If you call unto him, find out if he will answer you. Yeah. I can share my testimony mm -hmm. and therefore you can hear from me. But the only way for you to come to know Christ is mm -hmm. to simply invite him into invite your life. life. Okay. Invite, I mean, that was good. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I have a, a, a personal relationship. Mm -hmm. I, I probably have the, the uh, most, the least traditional church represented here, but my church and my calling is, is steeped in Jesus Christ, right. in the teachings of Christ. And I had an experience during uh, a meditation and a visualization where I experienced Christ. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said to me, <coughs> when you were on your sick bed, I healed you. Mm -hmm. When you wanted that job, I got that job for mm -hmm. you. No matter what you were going through, I help you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what makes you think I would leave you now, mm -hmm. that I have called you into the ministry? Mm -hmm. And so that is my own personal conviction and testimony. Mm -hmm. but, the, but that consciousness prevails no matter, you, you, you might not call it Christ, right. but the presence is there. Okay. And that's the most important thing. Al Shopton, he's in the church, you know, you went to a conference. Yeah, national yesterday. Act, the National Action Network yesterday. And Al Shopton was there? Of course. Al Sharpton was there. President Obama. President Obama was there. Now Al Sharpton is in the news because uh, he's accused of being an FBI informant. Right. And he's saying that no, that didn't happen. But also he said that um, he did it. He first he said no, it didn't happen. Then he said he did it because um, the the mafia was after him, mm -hmm. and that was why. I mean. I mean, what do you all think about this? I know it's, it, he's a reverend. He's part of the church. 
He was FBI informant and all that. I mean, what are your thoughts I about I think that the timing of the release of this news is very interesting okay. because it's not like something that happened last week, last month, last year. This happened many years ago. I don't okay. think it's news to those that released it. I think it had to do with the fact that he had his conference this week and uh -huh. they were trying to discredit the conference and look for some dirt to bring right. to the surface. And, mm -hmm. you know, while he is indeed a reverend, his ministry is, is uh, social activism. Right. He's about protecting the, those who are marginalized. And so mm -hmm. to paint this picture of him would then be an attempt to discredit who he is and what he does. Okay. I, I, like, my thing is this, anyone who cooperates with, with law enforcement to, 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 um, to um, get those who are doing illegal activities to oppress people, then I take my hat off to them. I don't uh, uh, yeah. demonize. I think that's a great thing, mm -hmm. you know. And 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 being retired from law enforcement, that was one of the many problems we had in our communities that individuals didn't step up and tell. They know who's selling drugs. They know who's doing this and that, and they wouldn't tell. And so that, so what happened was the communities stay oppressed, mm -hmm. you know. But when somebody steps up, it is this whole thing about a rat. I, I, I want rats to live next to me because I want uh, those crimes to be dispelled. <laughs> you, know, you know, I love I love the, the, the whole adage about nosy neighbors. Tell me what's yeah. going on. You know, so I, I, I take my hat off to them. Please it. call in 212-757-1393. 212-757-1393. Let, let me hear your thoughts about Reverend Al Sharpton being a quote-unquote snitch. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's what they have in the paper. And all that. And we do have a phone call. Call. He watches the talk TV show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? And what do you have to say? Hi, future. So, Lee and Manhattan. Hey, Lee. Back. How you doing? Wonderful. Wonderful show. Thank uh, you. First of all, Jesus was Middle Eastern. So, by definition, he was a man of color. Okay. The reason I'm calling mainly is because I want to echo something that Reverend Cecilia said at the beginning of the program about spiritualism and Jesus being inside it. Right. Uh, I was raised Roman Catholic, but I left the church. I'm in my, my 60s now. Okay. And um, I'm very involved in the community, work with youth, work with Meals on Wheels for seniors. Mm -hmm. But I've been told by the parish that I'm no longer welcome because I live with a man. Wow, and okay. the people in the congregation that are friends of mine that love me, they, they're, they're ready to leave the church. And I say, people don't. Because you have to find God inside you. And okay. the bottom line is that we reach out to others. And that, for me, is the part of spiritualism. Okay. I'm not knocking for parish priests or mission. But okay. true spiritualism, true faith, is the good works we do, how we get along with other people. Yeah, yeah exactly I'm right, Lee. By this. And anyway, I'll listen to you. Yeah. Honest. Okay, thank you. Will you have briefly, because... Yeah. What do you all have to say about what she said? That she was like, you know, outcast from the church. I mean, one of the most important things uh, that Jesus lifts up in the Bible is let he who, who has no sin cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. I think um, Reverend Gay commented on it earlier mm -hmm. that we are not to be judgmental. In fact, he says, uh, judge not by appearances, mm -hmm. but judge by righteous judgment, mm -hmm. which is a broad statement. But righteous judgment is the grace of God that all of us are entitled to. Mm -hmm. You know, time is running out. I, you know, as always, I would like for you all to stay up here all, sure, through, all day. Sure. So much to talk about. But we're going to have to end this segment with a prayer. Okay. And then we're going to end the show with uh, Sonia singing one last song to sing us out. So who wants to start the prayer first? Reverend Putman. Dear loving and gracious God, uh, God of mercy, God of grace, dear God, we ask that you dwell among us, dear God. You ask that you make us vehicles for your access, dear God. We ask that you help us uh, do a good work with this religion that you've placed upon our hearts, dear God. We ask that you help us to guide those in need and those that are marginalized, God. Allow us to continue to do this work. Okay. Father God, we love and give you thanks for this time, O oh Lord, for this opportunity, O oh Lord, to let our lights shine, O oh God, before your people in this very, very dark 
our, oh God, in this very, very dark world. Lord, you know what it is your people are in the need of hearing and seeing, oh God. And so we ask that regardless of the day, regardless of the hour, regardless of the challenge, oh God, that we will continue to show up, oh God. And mm -hmm. we will continue, oh Lord, to let our light shine, oh Lord, as you shine through us, oh Lord. Mm -hmm. Let us not create a new Bible. Let us not create a new Jesus. Let, let us not create a new understanding, but let's, let us look to you, who is the author and finisher of our faith. And as you lead, oh God, we will go. In oh. Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Mother, Father, everything, Almighty, Heavenly God, how grateful we are for Sister Talk. Uh -huh. How grateful we are for the good ministry that Deatra is bringing worth in, work forth in your word, in your wisdom, and in your way. Yes, God. In every aspect of your walk. We are grateful for Sonia Johnson's ministry through your powerful message. And we are grateful for each person in the hearing range of our voices going forth in the universe in unlimited and inexhaustible supply. And we ask that everyone within the sound of our voices be blessed. And we know that you are blessing us. We know that you are lifting us. We know that you are anointing us in your name. We are grateful. And so we say, amen. 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 Wow, that was great. I felt it. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so again, my name is Dietrich Kelsey, host of Talk TV show. And as always, I'm wishing you peace, love, and light. Mwah! <laughs> In celebration of the resurrection, we give praise unto God for sending us Jesus. We lift our hands in praise to you. We lift our hands in praise to you. We lift our hands in praise to you. It's the least that we can do. We lift our hands. We lift our hands without wrath or doubt. Because Jesus is so worthy of praise. Oh, yeah. We lift our hands in praise to you. Because that's what we were created to do.
Yeah. 